What? Yag Shemash, everyone. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome to Cavalcade of Food. Ah. I am Kevin. And I'm Ralph behind the camera. And I was going to say Stash, but that's, <laughs> that's Polish uh, nickname for Stanley, right? Yes. All right, so it looks like you're doing Polish or Klingon. I'm not sure. Gwumki. Oh, okay. Otherwise known as stuffed cabbage. That's what we're doing today oh, okay. on Cavalcade of Food. We've been getting a lot of requests for that, haven't we? Oh, yeah, we have. And you know what? This is the perfect time, Ralph, because went to the farmer's market this morning, and it was cabbages by the galore. Look at these. Um, Those are buttes. They are. And, you know, when you have this time of year, when it's really cabbage season, you want these nice big heads of cabbage because obviously you want the bigger leaves. Sure. The bigger leaves are easier to work with than the smaller leaves. And you can make, you know, a little bit more um, of a substantial uh, guumpy stuffed cabbage, cabbage roll, whatever you call them. And um, so anyways, we're going to make stuffed cabbage today. And I don't know if we'll use both of these heads. Uh, but we'll certainly need one, possibly two. And I see you're wearing your uh, St. Josephat. My, my St. Josephat kitchen apron. That's so The church um, where Kevin used great, to do a lot uh, of my, his... My parish uh, in Detroit, Michigan, and where me and my family cooked... A lot of Polish dinners. A lot of Polish dinners, Ralph, for many, many years. We fed thousands and thousands of hungry people, hmm. and it was our absolute pleasure. So this uh, recipe um, is your mother's, your grandmother's? Yeah, this was my, my grandmother's my and my mother's. And frankly, my grandmother taught my mother, and you know what? You didn't know one from the other. The food was wow. identical, so it was really good. And I know different Polish cooks do things a little bit differently, with yeah. little tweaks, just like with everything. So. Like everything else, you know, you, you get five Polish cooks together, and you're going to get five different recipes. And they'll all claim they're the most authentic. <laughs> so I'm going to wash my hands, because what we're going to do first, Ralph, is we are going to mix, put our, our filling together. Okay, um, and that looks like a mix of uh, pork and ground beef? chuck. Ground, ground chuck. Okay, so which is beef, of course. So I've got, and I just had the butcher grind this fresh for me this morning. Um, I've got two pounds of ground pork, one pound of ground chuck. So of course, you add that up, that gives you a total of three pounds of meat. Okay, so. You know what? I even found my grandma's bowl. Wow. I'm going to use it. Good, good, good. To, she's with us right now. That's yeah. the beauty. You know, if you're like me and you've got, of course, I have tons of old things, but, you know, a few of these old things, there's actually a connection because they belong to my mom or my grandma or my aunt or somebody. Right. And it's nice to have. It is. It's... Okay. Our meat's in there. And I washed my hands because... What did your What did your grandpa used to say about using fingers? He'd say God invented fingers before forks. Exactly, and you know what? So we're gonna we're gonna need our hands to mix. All right, so we've got our ground pork, our ground chuck, um, and I've all, before I forget, we're going to let me put a little salt and pepper in here in the mix. And you know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm probably putting in about. Two pinches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two pinches. You know, it's to taste how you like it. Um, and salt and pepper, pork, um, beef. And then what I did is I took one cup of rice. Long grain. Okay, yes. Although it doesn't have to be. White rice, long, one cup, and I, I cooked it. Okay? So, you know, the ra rice ratio, one cup of rice two cups of water, bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer, cover, cook for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then take the lid off. And you want the rice to kind of dry out and cool off. And you don't season it. I don't season it. Um, 
because you want the rice to be able to not, you don't want clumps of rice, you want individual pieces of rice. Okay, we're going to put the rice in here. So this is, this is, this is one cup of cooked, well, it's more than a cup of cooked rice. I start with a cup of raw rice, mm -hmm. and then I cook it, all right? Then, this was mom and grandma's secret. I'm going to take three chicken bouillon cubes. Oh, okay. Okay? And hopefully, I'm gonna break them up. Break them up if they're not no, if they're not too what? ancient. <laughs> these actually shouldn't be, but they're some are harder than others. So oh, these I'm gonna have to smash. There's with a sledgehammer in the back. Exactly. What we want to do is we want to you want to pulverize three chicken bouillon cubes. Okay. Let me see if I can smash any of these. No. Okay. That's all right. We will. You know what? Let me get a cutting board, and we'll do that. And then we're going to just sort of bring everything together. Um, maybe a spoon here. There we go. See, folks, that wasn't as hard no, as you thought. No, it's not hard. You, just, you know. It's always about improvising. Now, of course, you know, it didn't occur to me, uh, they do make powdered bouillon, uh, which, of course, if you had, if you use powdered bouillon, then you know what, that's even easier, and you'd put in about three teaspoons of the powdered bouillon. All right, but okay. you're following Grandma and, but and this Mom's is, recipe. this is how, exactly, this is how they do it. So this is how I'm doing And it. I've been a friend of the family for a long time, and I remember your mom's guamki very fondly. So... I'm just going to get in here and I'm just going to mix all this together, Ralph. And then we're going to just set it aside and we'll start to work on our cabbage. I've got, find the, um, the biggest pot you have, okay, uh, in the house. And, you know, here that, see that red stock pot is what I'm going to use. You want to fill it about uh, three quarters of the way with water and bring it to a boil. And we're gonna need that for the cabbage. So I'm gonna get this meat mixed, we'll put it aside, and then we'll start getting our cabbage ready. Making guam. I thought I smelled onions yes, and butter cooking. Did. So, got the rice in, the meat. Now, Ralph, this is two medium onions that are browned in six tablespoons of butter Ooh. okay so very important and you can do this I did this a little earlier and let it cool off okay but you look look how beautiful you want those one because it sweetens it you want it cooked in that butter and um, I've got a pinch of salt a pinch of pepper and you want to cook these onions low uh, and slow because you don't want to burn them. You just want to get them that beautiful brown color. That golden okay? brown. So you could have added these in when you, you know, when I put the rice in. Yeah. But you know what? I had it on the stove back there, and it was out of my line of sight. <laughs> and I turned around, and I said, oh, shucks, i got to put the onions in there. So you know what? No harm done. No. We're going to put them in now. Never too late for onions. No, never too late. And so just we're going to work these onions into the meat mix, mm. okay? And the onions are really important uh, here uh, to do that. And didn't I hear you say something about, you You know, that you can adjust the meat to rice ratio? Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with other Polish cooks, and some people put in less rice or more, so it depends on how you want. If you don't want that much rice in it, you know, and of course, we were always stretching it to, to feed a big family or to um, feed a big crowd dinner. after mass. Um, so, you know, you could, you could instead of putting in a, a cup of um, right, using a cooking a cup of rice, you could cook three quarters of a cup or a half a cup if you wanted it to be more meaty. The rice does tend to help lighten it up a little bit. Okay, um, so really that's up to you. Because when you, you don't want to skimp on the onions, right? 
but just that, re remember that. Yeah, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, that's the the secret the, ingredient, secret the ingredient. Polish ingredient. But yeah. the, uh, I was going to say the um, just remember, friends out there, that uh, rice yields more after it's cooked. Yes, right, exactly. Um, and again, you know, you want the rice to see how there's no clumps of rice in here. It's all individual. You want to dry that rice out. Now how do you do that? So after you cook it, after it's done, take it off the heat, take the lid off your pot, Ralph, fluff it up with a fork, mm -hmm. and just let all that steam evaporate. Let it come out, okay? So the air will dry it, it out. Yes, and let it cool off and then take the fork back and fluff it again and that will the other thing you want to do with rice and it does help is i always rinse it before i cook it oh okay so you measure your rice out you put it in a sieve and you give it a good rinse with water that gets a lot of that starch off and it's oh, the starch that clumps it that clumps it but wow. it keeps the, the rice stuck together that's a nice little okay? tidbit okay so that's another thing but anyways so this is but Again, this is how mom and grandma made it, and so this is how we're making it. Mm -hmm. But if you want, you know, less rice, fine. Um, do it that way. Uh, I guess you could use brown rice if you wanted to uh, instead of uh, a white, you know, the white rice. But like I said, make sure two nice medium onions in butter, browned beautifully. And you want to add those in. Let's keep it okay. traditional. All right. So now our filling's done. I'm going to wash up. We'll do the cabbage. Now let's talk about these cabbages, okay? The time has come to speak of many things. <laughs> yes. Um, cabbages and kings. Cabbages. What is that from? Lewis uh, and Carol. Or Louis, <laughs> never mind. Lewis Carroll. Um, it's one of his poems, I believe. I think so. Okay. So... Here's what we've got. Let's look at the cabbage. Now, I know you said, are you going to wash these? Well, you know what, Ralph? These outer leaves we're not going to use, okay? We're not going to use for the, for the ca stuffed cabbage rolls, okay? But what you've got in every cabbage, this is, of course, the stem where it grows on the plant, okay? And that goes all the way up the center of the cabbage, and that's the core, okay? okay? So what we want to do is a little surgery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here in yep. with the knife going in. Around so the stem. Of, around, exactly. Around and the that, stem. And that's going to release all those dirty leaves so you and, don't have to use them. And we don't want that tough core anyways. Right. Now these, these outside leaves are not, you know, Nothing to write home about. No, they're they're torn up and they're look at they're dirty. Okay, they're filled with earth from the garden, garden, from the farm, and but so you just want to keep cutting Is until that a, you kind of get all the way through. Would you suggest a bigger knife? There we go. Oh, you got it. Good. Okay. okay. So now you can still see see the core there. Yes. I'll cut off a little bit more. We get that out. We're not going to have that anyways, but but it'll it'll help the leaves to release a little better. Raw cabbage is very good for you. I'm eating the core. Um, that's mm. that's sort of a tough usually. A, all right, tough. It's got a good spot. cabbage flavor. All right, so now we're gonna maybe I'll take this leaf off here. This outer leaf. Boy, these are on tight. Look at that. Yeah. Now, what I might do I with make some good, of the bigger ones yeah. is I may save them because Ralph... For a bathing cap? <laughs> that make yeah, a good... Right? <laughs> no. We actually line the roasting pan with cabbage leaves. Oh. Ones that either tore, are too big, are too ratty, are too small, okay... Um, that helps for, steaming for it? Making the, the, but it, it just, one, it protects the, the rolls from getting burnt, mm -hmm. like having direct contact with the sides of the roaster pan, and it just puts that much more cabbagey goodness in the in flavor. The, in the, in the glumpy. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, yeah, see that, that one, we don't want that. 
we'll, we'll peel this away. We'll take that leaf off. And with the core gone, it's very easy to take these off, okay? You really like that, huh? Yep. It's like coleslaw without the dressing. Mm. Now, I've got my pot coming up to, to temperature to boil here. It's a lot of water, so it's going to need another minute. Once, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Even before it starts to boil, I'm going to try to gently put this cabbage in here. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Now, I know you, right. you want our friends to be careful not to burn their yes. little fingers. And you know, I somewhere I have a big fork. And I'll use that, um, and that might be an easier way to lower it in. You know, remember, don't fill this pot up with water because... Uh, science. Science, <laughs> displacement, right? So I only had it about three quarters full, but basically what the heat's going to do is it's going to help... Set, it's it's going to get up into those m many layers within the cabbage in between the leaves, and it will help separate. Okay, okay got it. So I'm going to... I'm going to let this do its thing. I'm going to put this one on the side. And do a we little are going to get this area ready to receive our cabbage leaves. Ralph, look what's happening here. Wow. As the water gets in between these cabbage leaves, they will start to come off. So I guess tongs are pretty important at this point. They are. Yeah, it looks like, so, looks like the brain that ate Croswell. <laughs> so you want to have a strainer kind of ready here at the go. Um, and we're going to just, again, one leaf at a time. Here, when you look under the underside of the cabbage, look, here we go. Uh, See that? How easily they come off. Yeah. So then you just kind of start peeling them off and letting them cool. One at a time, yes, you let them cool because they are hot. We're not done with them yet. Um, let me get my... This is what I was looking for before, that tool to help kind of get the cabbage into the pot. But... Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay. You also want to have, have a bunch of clean kitchen towels at the ready because, you know, you're, you're working with wet things and and dripping all over the place oh that's a beauty right there okay so is each one of these going to make a stump each cabbage one, yes and we will probably might have to trim some of these up a little bit if they're a little ragtag or they have a little you know dirt or grit or whatever because um, we obviously don't want that in our our guamki your but polish tamales <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same idea. Yeah, it's yeah. really beautiful how cultures, different cultures from different parts of the world share a lot of similar kinds of um, ways to prepare food. Right. And using everything in the garden as best they can, like with tamales, it's the corn husks yeah, from the right. corn. And uh, in Central America, it's the banana leaves. And in... Um, China, it's the lettuce wraps. I don't know yep. if that's really... I don't know if that's really Chinese. <laughs> I think that's... It's not a, more of an Americanization, yeah. but still, it's fun. And so, uh, so, yeah, that's coming off easy. And to see how they get more, kind of even like more clean or clear or whiter as they get closer to the center. And so... Better you know, formed. The, this, this hot water is essentially kind of blanching uh, the leaves... Uh, but it is essential um, because it's one, it's softening them up, making them a little pliable, and two, it's the water as the water works in between these these layers yeah. that will let us kind of peel them off, peel them off gently. Is there so you need a pair of tongs. Have yourself a, a, a big fork here. I'm sorry, what, Ralph? Um, how does somebody know when the cabbage is? Like when you're at the market and you want to buy a cabbage for this, mm -hmm. is it always ready when it's on the market? Or is there a certain way to look for the cabbage to make sure that it's... it's well, you just you want to make sure that it, it's firm, okay? Um, if it still has its outer leaves, because 
These outer leaves are the things that go by, go bad first. Right. And as cabbage sits around, okay, and doesn't sell, these leaves start to dry out and curl up. And they keep peeling them off and peeling them I off. I see. So if a cabbage has been around the block a few times, it won't have any outer leaves. Those would have been peeled off. Oh. Okay. And it probably wouldn't have been picked unless it was ready anyway. So that kind of answers my own question yeah. there. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to take a, keep taking a few more of these off one at a time here. And also see, Ralph, when, we, when we, I cut that core out, that, that really helps prepare the head of cabbage for the releasing of the leaves. Right. The closer you get to that, you mean, yes, like where you exactly. cut it, they start coming off more easily. So I'm going to see if I can get a few more off of here, and um, we'll come on back. So Ralph, I've cored this out, like the first one, and we're going to just... Ever so gently. gently put it in our, our water here. I don't know if I can get it out. There we go. And we'll let that, it takes a few minutes, let that water work up in there. Now, let me show you what we've got to do now with these leaves, okay? This is the part my dad used to say where you need asbestos fingers. Mm. But what he meant is because they're still hot. But let's look, come here, I want, let's look at this cabbage leaf. So here's the cabbage leaf. This is all fine, but you see that? That, that main... Like a vein? Like a vein, right. It's that main central stem. That is thick and that is tough. And you know what? It, it's not very bendy. So what we do is take your cabbage leaf, lay it on your towel here, take a... You, here's where you got to use a paring knife. And we are going to ever so gently take that out. Now, look. Okay, so we're going to cut, just going to cut right along the, we'll do another one. We're going to just cut right along the stem. He's eating it. See, it's crunchy, isn't it? Yeah, it's still hard. But what we want to do. But you're going to bake these anyway, right? Yes, they're going to be baked. But the. the that stem would never soften no, enough. No, we're not. We're, so we're just going to shave this off. Okay. Okay. We're going to shave it off there and so we want a, just a nice blanket of cabbage here okay? yeah you want your cabbage leaves to be more compliant or more pliant I should say so this yeah this really is a you know this is a good way we used to have a production line where dad and I would be at the pots peeling the cabbage leaves off and then mom and sister and some friends would be at here trimming the leaves or the stems off the leaves right you know if it's really thick um you can actually just cut it out completely okay okay because it'll get folded up into yeah, it yeah it will get folded up so sometimes this every cabbage is you know every cabbage is like a person it's all different um, individual traits so if if the if the if the if the center vein is really thick and really hard just cut it out completely but my point I'm just trying to make is we don't want this as part of the cabbage roll okay because it doesn't it doesn't roll very well right and it's tough okay it's interesting how you said it's like an assembly line because that's how it was with uh, my mom when she would make tamales same thing she'd get all my sisters over and Everybody would get to take a bunch home if they helped, and you know that's like this. You make a lot at a time. You make a lot at a time. There's no, there's no point in making a few of these, especially you know even if you want to just do one, you could cut the um, the, the, the recipe, recipe in half, the meat recipe, and maybe just use one head of cabbage if you wanted to. But you know, I'll tell you these freeze beautifully. And so, now here's one, Ralph. This one's a little tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this out, that part of it. Now cut okay. that out. Yeah. Okay, and we'll work around. So, so the main thing is to get that harder stem out of each cabbage right. leaf. Yep. So I'm going to come back to our pot 
and I see here, look. It's starting to loosen up yeah. already. That's an outer leaf. We'll use some of these. I can tell they're not great. They'll these make outer leaves. They'll make perfect liners, though, for the roasting pan. Got it. And that's look at see. Mm-hmm. So we will use that there. But you were right about you know what? This is cabbage soup in the making, folks. So wouldn't you have to strain it because it's got some dirt and yeah, stuff in it. It, it? You would. I mean, I don't even know. I would probably start with fresh water, actually. But um, we're gonna. I'm going to keep working on, on these leaves, and we're going to have our stuff ready for our cabbage rolls. Okay, you ready to roll? I am ready to roll. So, Ralph, look at all these cabbage leaves. You're ready to roll literally. Okay, so they're all stacked up. Now, here's what I'm using. The good old speckled roaster pan. It even has a cabbage leaf design inside almost of it. Almost <laughs> does, yes. So, I've just giving it a quick rinse with some water and remember those less than perfect leaves I was talking about Ralph I'm going to put these in here oh yeah okay insulation yes exactly right so we're gonna line literally the roaster with these leaves and as you said it prevents it from burning and it keeps the cabbage flavor intensifying yes it does so I'm just gonna, we can't, you know, these, these leaves weren't quite, you know, they tore, whatever. Uh, they weren't quite the right uh, thing for the actual cabbage roll. That one's got some dirt on it. We'll just tear that off. Okay. But yeah, so go ahead and line your, your roaster pan, whatever you're going to use, whatever you have. Um, uh, maybe you have a really large Dutch oven. You want something that can go in the oven. Okay, we're going to roast these at about 300, 325 degrees for a few, for a couple of hours. Um, so. So you just want to cover every open spot? Yeah, I kind of want to get it on the side too, get mm. the walls. And that's why I wet the pan a little bit. It kind of helps the leaves you did stick. What? Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Just enough to kind of co cover it. Yeah. Mostly. Okay, so now we've got our cabbage leaf. Now, how much to put in? Well, each leaf is a different size. You know... Uh, when we would make these in big volume, we might weigh them. Two ounce, three ounce, depending really? on how much we wanted to put in. Because you didn't want some mad parishioners claiming they got oh, less than somebody would. else. That, those are, <laughs> I, that's, mines aren't as big as that. So it's like, okay, we're not getting into that. So you want to kind of just shape it like, you know, a, a football shape, okay? Now, we're going to roll and then once you get it rolled that way take the sides and tuck oh so just uh and complete the roll like so oh okay and nice. in the pan it goes so let's do that let's let's try that again get your leaf flattened out here okay get your meat again you know when you're making it for family don't they're not uh, you're going to have some smaller leaves that you're just not going to be able to put as much filling in. And then you'll have larger ones that will require more. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it is a in... Imprecise uh, yes. uh, process. So, but we want to give it a complete roll and then bring these sides in, tuck, complete and keep the roll. rolling. Kind of like... Um, Egg roll. <laughs> yeah, or a burrito, right? Or a burrito, yeah, because that looks like a stack of pancakes there, or a stack of tortillas. So, you um, know, it's kind of the, the same idea. Yeah, I'm using a paper towel again. These leaves are still a little wet, um, and they will be just from being, you know, in the, in the, in the boil pot. I like the size of these so far. These are going to be pretty filling and delicious looking. Yeah, you know, I mean, hey, us Polish boys can eat, although, Ralph, I'll tell you, I know that my mom always would pay Ralph the greatest compliment there is to be paid. <laughs> and that was, she said, 
Ralph is a good eater. Yeah. There was no higher praise in our house <laughs> than somebody who was a good eater. <laughs> Food is love. Yeah, it sure, sure and is. She would never let my plate be, be empty. close to empty. Anytime it was even, I'd finish something, she'd say, he needs some more. Give him some more. And I would eat it and love it. And, you know, so just kind of roll with it. Sometimes you'll get a, um, a leaf that's a little torn, okay? You know, it's it's okay. We will just work around that. We'll just do like this. A little bit more on here. Shows what you mean by work around it. Well, you know what? Let's just, it's it's torn, but There's you enough know to cover it. There is enough, and you know what? No one is gonna be the wiser, and you just roll that tear right in. Now right. look, okay? And we're gonna keep going. And I now, see how you kind of place them in there, and. It, in a way to maximize the space. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. We're going to try to get as many. <clears throat> we'll have two layers, okay, for sure, mm -hmm. uh, in there. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to, before I forget, of course, you have a gravy that goes in here, or sauce, however you want to think about it. Refer to it. Tomato soup. Oh, okay. okay? Now, this is a large 26-ounce can. Because I would normally use, I think there's the regular small can is like 10 and 10 and a half ounces, 10 and three quarter ounces. I might use th two or three of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, the contents of this can in a pan, and then I'm going to dilute it. I'm going to take half of a can, just half of a can of water, and I'm going to put that on the stove and just get it warm. And that will go over our stuffed cabbage. Mm, sounds okay? good. Okay. So in the meantime, Ralph, <laughs> that's I'm a step just saver. Keep rolling, keep and rocking. Keep rocking and rolling. Okay, Ralph. I see. Layer one is done. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have our our sauce. Okay. And this is diluted tomato soup. Yeah, just it's condensed tomato soup. Just diluted about half, okay? With water or milk? With water. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. Okay, then... Um, the next layer. The next layer, but before the next layer, this is just something that Ma always did. Sprinkle maybe, not a lot, maybe a tablespoon or so of brown sugar oh okay that's a nice touch just like that all right now in goes the next layer and we'll get that in there and it's some of these are nice size it's so neat how they just stay wrapped up like you don't even need a toothpick or glue or anything <laughs> no glue no toothpick is required. it just the 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 food i mean yeah, the, just, the meat and the make a tight wrap okay so we're going to do the same thing here we're going to put in our tomato soup like so and we just have that go now i've got the oven Preheated to 325 degrees. All right, there's all the soup. Okay, and we'll do the same thing here. A little, a little brown sprinkle. sugar for the pan. A tablespoon or two. A couple of pinches. Yep. Maybe she did that to counteract any acidity oh, yeah. or something. But you don't. Nothing tastes sweet, but it just, uh, it, it, it's in there. It balances okay. it out somehow. Now, we've got some leaves left over. Look what I'm doing. We're going to make a nice little blanket. Oh, yeah. Uh, here for our remaining. Quumpke. Yep. All right. There. Oh, look at that. Tuck them in. Yeah. All right. Now. Let me say this. You want to have this for a Sunday dinner? 
make it on Saturday. Even better, make it on Friday if you can. So it's good when it's done, but it's even better it, when it sits. Exactly. It's good when it's done. It's great the next day mm -hmm. and two days after. So we're not going to eat these today. Right. We're going to eat these tomorrow. So what I'm going to do, Ralph, is I'm going to put this in the 325 degree oven for yeah, about two hours. Okay. I'm going to take it out. We're going to let it cool. And then tomorrow, I'm going to turn the oven back, put them in the fridge once they're cool. Put them in the fridge just like this in the roaster. Tomorrow, I will reheat the oven and we'll put them back in. And by that, of course, they'll already be cooked. Um, and for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And then it's eating time. So Kevin's Polish stuffed cabbage is one of those magical dishes that gets better with time and needs a day or two to really come to life. Yeah. And all the flavors set in and the flavors deepen and get more in, ingrained or enriched. Intensify. Intensify, there's and the word. Yeah, it would be no sin in eating it today, okay? They would be good. But... We're not going to. And he would know because he made them for the church. Uh, there. And by the way, of course, more than we're going to eat, but I'm, we're going to use the General Electric. General Electric. This is either a 59 or a 60 model. Uh, and we're going to keep it in there because I need the other oven for dinner tonight. So, um, these freeze beautifully, by the way, too. So if you want, you know you have leftovers, even after the second day, put them in a nice container, stick them in the freezer. So no really says you have to feed an army. You could just feed yourself over a period of the winter months. Exactly. So, you know, like I might break that up into like little packages of, say, four or six rolls, okay? And then it's like, oh... We need dinner? Great, we've got it, it's in the freezer. So, we will come back, we'll, we'll, we'll come back tomorrow, we'll, we'll have you join us tomorrow when we reheat these and dig into these delicious guamki, stuffed we'll, cabbage. We'll call that the finale. Yeah. It's not gotabiki? <laughs> no, that's an L. Oh, uh, just kidding, I know it's guamki, yeah, okay. even though yes. it looks... Okay like Golabki or Katapki because it's Polish. <laughs> Anyways, okay, we'll see you tomorrow when it's eating time. So, here we are, folks. Welcome back. Stuff cabbage. This is the final chapter. The finale, <laughs> the grand finale. So they've been sitting for a day overnight. Overnight. Cool, after so, cooling off. Yep, so, you know, you take it out of the oven like we did yesterday. I take the lid off. I let it cool completely and then put it in the fridge. You never want to put something scalding hot right into a refrigerator. It's not good. So let it cool down. I covered the top of the roaster with tin foil, took the lid off because that didn't fit. And it sat there and then about, oh, an hour ago, took it out of the fridge, put it into a 300 degree oven just to let it warm through for an hour or so. So to reheat. And in the meantime, Ralph, we got some, made some biscuits um, I've got some nice steamed buttered um, parsley carrots and then I also made a little extra gravy or sauce um, because we like, a, we like a lot of extra. Now if you remember we put some over the stuffed cabbage yesterday when we baked them but this is to serve. So what I used here, real simple. One can, I'll put the recipe below, just a standard 10, 10, 10 ounce can of um, tomato soup, and then a half a can of water. Oh, a good pinch of brown sugar and a good pinch of black pepper. Mm. And then that's your, that's your table gravy, if you want it, for, um, for the stuffed cabbage. Because even though you put some on the cabbage when in the roaster, it uh, might have got cooked away a little bit. Yep. Take a look. So these are the, the leaves that you kind of put over to so, insulate. Yeah, so remember, Ralph, we made a nice little blanket. We had extra cabbage leaves, and we made a nice little... Let me get a pair of tongs here. 
But now you see how these browned up, but what they did is they, this is an extra layer. Of course, you could eat these, they'd be delicious. Mm -hmm. um, this was just an extra layer of protection for what lies underneath. So let's peel these back. Oh my God, the smell. Right? Yes. Oh, there they are, Look at folks. those babies. Look at those. So you know what? I'm going to take just one. Now there's some of the pan juice, which is our tomato. If you want, you can serve it like that. Or, you know what? This, because when the cabbage cooks, you know, cabbage, like all vegetables, have a lot of water in it. So this, this is a little thicker than what is in there because it's not diluted, but rail. Huh? Yes. So that's beautiful. Is it fork tender or do you need a knife to cut into it? Well, I think we're, I'm going to use a knife. It should be, look at this, nice and tender. There. Look at that. Look at that. There it is, folks. And I have to tell you, I love cabbage. So for me, you know, mom would make these. And as much as I love the meat inside, I love the, the cabbage. Just like mama used to make. You know, just that fast. I'm at mom's table, just like just that. Just like a warm hug. Yep. Wow. So good. Oh. Came out good. Mmm. Wow. The cabbage is very tender. Of course, you know, the meat, it's the pork and the beef. You're really tasty. Remember all those onions we put in? Oh, yeah, right. And you're getting that wonderful oniony flavor. That was the onion with the butter and all that. Yeah. yeah. And then, again, you don't, you're not mm -hmm. tasting it, but that little sprinkle of brown sugar. Brown sugar and the, there, there's a nice cross section. And then the, um, the sprinkling of the brown sugar and then the, um, you know, tomato Extra sauce. soup. Mm -hmm. So they kind of wow. balance each other and kind of yes. create a nice, complete, d deeper, richer flavor. The question is, how many of these am I going to eat? <laughs> it looks like he's going to eat that mm. whole thing. Well, you can see, we certainly have enough for dinner tonight. But it makes a lot. It makes a lot. Some of these will end up in the freezer, and that's perfectly fine. You said they freeze well. Because, you know, stuffed cabbage is like, whether you're making pierogi or soup or tamales you don't make four of them i mean if you're going to do it you're going to make a whole batch of them yes and so you're either going to feed a big crowd or you're going to have dinner um and freeze it and have it for uh, for the for a couple of nice warm winter nights and we'll just look at this there that is a complete picture of delicious dinner i can't wait to to get Dig down in. to business here. <laughs> yeah, well, Anyways. Then let's wrap this up. Because this is a recipe that's close to, near and dear to my heart, something that Ralph had many times that my mom prepared, and we are just so glad that we could share it with you. Not to mention all the church dinners you and your dad and sister did. We made these by the thousands uh, over the years. And people loved them. And... Um, we hope you love them. So we had a lot of requests for stuffed cabbage, and we were glad to bring this to you. And you know what? We're going to enjoy. We hope you enjoy. Make some food. Share it with people you love, family, friends, neighbors. And use the bounty of uh, the harvest. The cabbage is, this is that time of year, it's right? cabbage galore right now. So you know what? We, uh, and it's a, just a great cold winter meal. Yes. So thanks for spending some time with us yes, here thank on Cavalcade of Food. And we will look forward to seeing you again real soon. Real soon. Next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.